Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. The one thing that I like to do when I'm shooting videos is to make calculated decisions based on the exposure readings that I'm getting. Now there's a number of ways to measure the exposure of a shot, like using a light meter, or what we'll be looking specifically at in this video is using the monitor. Now I'm talking about a monitor that has false color, a waveform, histogram, and a vector scope. And we're gonna use all of these tools to see what's happening from a light perspective. Most cameras don't have built-in scopes like false color, waveform, and you know, a vector scope. So we're gonna be using an external monitor, which is the VS5X from Aperture, and I'll drop a link in the description so you can check it out. But for the most part, the rules for this and understanding what's happening with lighting is that we wanna be able to keep our camera settings exactly where they're best, right? So we wanna be able to keep our shutter angle at 180 degrees or one over 48 if you're doing shutter speed. We wanna shoot wide open at f2.8 and we wanna shoot at our camera's native ISO, which is 800 on the Blackmagic Cinema camera. To start off the shot, we have our talent Mastin who's sitting on the bed and we have no other lights other than natural light coming in through the scene. And we can look at false color first, which is my favorite tool to use. And we see right here, we have a variety of different colors and this is telling me different exposure levels. So anything closer to pink, you know, dark blue is gonna tell me that it's very dark. So anything that's red or very close to 100 IRE is gonna be either very bright or overexposed. So that's something we gotta consider and we can see that off the start here, our foreground is mostly underexposed while our background is very close to being overexposed. So that's what false color does. It breaks down the exposure right at the start. Then you have your waveform monitor, which shows you more of a third person perspective of what's happening with the data here. And you see from the walls are completely, you know, underexposed a little bit, you know, they're about 40 IRE. And then you see that the information that's clipping at 100 IRE is obviously the blown out elements. And then we obviously have our talent mass and who is giving us a range of exposure. So that's something to look at. So waveform is really just a more spread out data driven uh, scope. And then you have your histogram, which is from zero to 100 as well, but it's not as uh, convenient as waveform, but it's still something that's very helpful if you want a quick glance of you know what your exposure is. Then you have the vector scope, which measures the saturation of each color. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a key light because the exposure on Madison is definitely not good. We need to at least try to bring her skin tones to somewhere near you know, 60 to 70 IRE, somewhere around that range. And once we bring up the key light, as you can see, we're able to expose a lot better and we are able to get an informative reading of what's going on in the shot. And we're pretty much at this exposure that I would like to be at for our skin tones and we're able to easily read that. And you can also see this information in the waveform that the midtones and even the wall exposure has actually risen up a little bit and we can see where that's spread at. at. So now what we wanna take a look at is some of the blown out elements in the background, obviously the building is overexposed. So we're gonna throw in a ND filter and, and as we apply our two stop ND filter, you'll see that the exposure goes down on our background and bringing down the background by a little bit gives us more information to work with in post-production. So we're not worried about blowing anything out and that's why we would apply an ND filter. Now that we have that ND filter applied, you can see that the shot is once again underexposed for our talent Madison. And we're gonna go ahead and boost up the key light using false color until we get around that 60, 70 IRE, which I like to shoot at. We've taken a good look at the waveform and false color, but let's take a look at the vector scope. Now, Madison changed into a red shirt and you can see that the data on the vector scope tends to lead more towards the reds because the shirt is very dominant in the scene. And now we're able to get an idea of what the reds are like in this scene. And we can consider that for you know, whatever we're trying to do. And taking a one last look at the waveform, as you see, we closed the blinds here and we have no more uh, hot information in the background because the blinds are closed and that background is completely gone. And we see that we have a very easy range of data to work with here in post-production. And here is our final shot that we were able to create just by measuring the scene using false color, waveform, and the vector scope. We're able to see what exactly is happening in our scene and we're able to make an educated decision just by using scopes. So I hope you found our first part of our shooting with scopes informative. Next week, we're gonna take a look at using scopes in post-production and making educated decisions based on what's happening with our color correction. So if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and hit that bell icon to receive a notification when I upload a video. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And as always, I hope you have a good day.